Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are drafting once more. Uh-huh. Today's stipulation is that every pick cannot be older than- No, hold on, I totally just inversed that, but that could be another one. The next pick can't be younger than the previous player, so they could be the same age, but they cannot be younger. So obviously we want to try starting as low as we can, but we also want to have a good team. So I think this one's going to be very, very difficult, to be honest. My initial prediction is we're not going to be any good, but we'll find out. It will also depend on what draft pick we get. But anyways, it is time to do the randomization of the team, and I'm here in play now. Here we go. It's going to be the Edmonton Oilers. And then Leon pops up. What are the odds? Fantasy draft on, owner mode off, fog of war and player morale off, as well as editing my lines, you jabroni. Let's just stop with that. All right, this is going to be huge. Can we get a good first pick? Or I guess it's just a pick in general. I didn't turn fantasy draft on, did I? Oh, I did. We get seven. That's pretty good. But is it good enough? Kill McCarr went third overall. I was kind of hoping to get him, but there should still be someone who's quite young. 24 in caps off. 23 for Kachuk. Chuck. Jason Robertson's 22. Andre Sveshnikov is 21. And we also get Quinn Hughes at 21. Oh, that's big. Jack Hughes is 20 and he's making 900k. He doesn't have any X factors or abilities. Oh man, this is tough. This is actually a very difficult decision. I kind of want to just go with Hughes, but well, yeah, which Hughes? That's the question. And then there's also Svetch, which, I mean, if I do take Hughes, that does give me the option to draft a, another 20 year old, but will there even be any that are worth grabbing at that point. I don't think so. All right, my mind's been made up. We are going with Svetch. ADB 23. That's a pretty big step up already, though. Kai Ru at 23 as well. Drake Batherson is 23. So we have 22-year-old Nico Heischer here. Brady Kachuk, 21. So maybe I'll take Brady, and then we will come back, and we might just go straight to 23. Yeah, let's try it out. 8.2, that's a hefty contract, but I guess we're gonna have to risk it for the biscuit here and try to find a good centerman. So there's Drake Batherson, who's making 4.9, but there's also Tage Thompson, who is 23, and only making 1.4. And that would set the new bar to 23, which is still pretty good. So you know what? I think I will take Tage. Oh, I could have taken Swaim, and that is very unfortunate. Anderson is 24. I am having a little bit of a difficult time finding 23. There we go, in Dubois. There's also Sergachev and Brat. So I am going to go with Sergachev for the simple reason that we need defensemen. Dubois is the only 23-year-old that is 85 overall or better. So only making 5 million. That's not crazy. It shouldn't damage our cap hit too bad. So yeah, that is where we're headed next. Actually, just thinking about it, I feel like the inverse of this challenge might actually be harder. I really want to take Ryan Hartman, but that would bring us up to 26, which could be problematic. We have a bunch of 25-year-olds here that could fit. And we have 24. We still have the bar at 23, remember? Okay, I think it's time to go up to 24. But whomst will be the pick to do so? That's the question. Oh, John, you legend. He shoots right. That is prime. 4.4. That will complete our first defensive pairing. I think for goalies, I'm going to wait and just try to get a seasoned vet, if you will. However, I will also look again pretty soon just to see what's going on over there. Oh, Natchez. Why is he 83 overall? I feel like he deserves better than that. Maybe not. Maybe I'm crazy, but I'm going to take another defenseman in Alexander Carrier because he is 83 overall and making less than a mil. Pool party would have been sick, but unfortunately the bar is at 24 now. And on that note, I will be taking Jake DeBrusque. I might have to just skip 25 and go straight to 26. In fact, you know what? I am going to do that for Trevor Moore. Didn't see any of these guys before, but that's cool. Not like I wanted to draft any of them anyway. Well, we're going up to 27. I am taking Barabanov, who's only making one mil, which I don't know why I'm making cap-wise decisions at this point. We have a ton of cap. Screw it. We're going up to 28. Adam Larson at 4 mil will be our second pairing defenseman closer second pairing defenseman finale Brandon Saad would be perfect for the third line so I am going to yeah yeah let's go with Saad probably should have came back here because I would have taken Elvis but it is what it is Willie Carlson will be our third line centerman I'm very tempted to take Brandon Gallagher simply for the fact that we're only going up to 29 and we have cap space he would be amazing our offense would be extremely deep so take Gallagher I shall all right I've got a little bit of a plan here I'm gonna take Howla who is 30 and then there's a goalie back there that is also 30 that better still be there come on there he is DeSmith 82 overall not the best could be worse 
first, though, for sure. So we finally hit the big 3-0. Justin Schultz would be a solid defenseman to draft here. 4 million, which doesn't really matter at this point. But anyway, he's 31. There is also 30, but I kind of want to go up here because 82 overall. And then maybe we... Hmm, no, we probably can't afford that. Well, let's go with Subban just because we have $18 million of cap left. And why not, you know? And then I'm going to go with Ian Cole to be the defensive partner there. I'm assuming anyway, because I'm just going to do best lines. Maybe I'll shuffle it up a little bit, depending on how the line chemistry is. I'm debating between these two, and I think I'm going to take Benino just because his face-offs is a little bit better. On that note, all we need is a backup goalie who is 33... Or younger. This would bring, or sorry, older. Bernier would bring us right to the cap. But Mike Smith and Brian Elliott are both older and 83 overall. Smith has two abilities. I feel like Mikey hasn't worked out too good for me in the past, but he was good on Trailer Park Boys, so I'm going to go ahead and make him our starting goalie, I suppose. There is a draft summary for you. Curious to see what it's going to look like when we put it in the line screen. We don't have any players 90 overall or better, but we are a very deep squadron. So let's go ahead and do best lines here. Boom. We get a dash two on this line. No, thank you. I think I'm just going to have to suck it up and have that dash one on the third line here. It is what it is, you know? So our first line will consist of Brady Kachuk, Tage Thompson, and Andre Svechnikov. That is a solid first line. Our second line has more Dubois and DeBrus. Then we got Saad, Carlson, Gallagher, Barabanov, Benino, and Howla. Defensively, I have moved John down. I'm very sorry. It just works out best that way. Also, I apparently drafted... Why do I always draft too many right-handed defensemen? I feel like I do that every single time. But anyway, we got Sergachev and Carrier, which gets a zero, and then Larson Cole with one, Subban and Marino with a one. In net, Mike Smith will be backed up by Da Smith. I didn't even think of that, but that's actually kind of funny. We got the Smith brothers, so let's go ahead, start the simulation. My prediction is that, you know what, I'm going to say we don't make the playoffs. We're going to get 40 wins, miss the playoffs, and Svetch will have the most points with 71. No, 72, because that's a great number. Go ahead, either comment your prediction or just lock it up up there for now to see if... You guessed it right. We're not doing too bad. 10, 7, and 0. We apparently don't want to lose in overtime, though. Refusing to add a tally in that column. Our division so far looks quite competitive, which is not good news for us. We emerged victorious with an 8-5 win in the Battle of Alberta, so that's all that really matters, honestly. Okay, we're actually doing very decent all of a sudden. What happened? Sat third in the division going into the long break here, and we come back with an overtime loss. We're at three now in that column. All right, so we are definitely getting more than 40 wins. I was certainly off in that department. I'll keep our current trading block and just see who's available, even though I I do not plan to make any trades because we can't really. Jason Robertson, that is interesting. Petrangelo's on the block, Spurgeon. It's a pretty good trade deadline this year. A lot of solid players available. But alas, I shall not be trading because we can't really. Based on the stipulation of the draft, Thompson and a first headed to Carolina in exchange for Petrangelo and a fourth. I suppose Jason Robertson is not on the move because that would have been blockbuster, I would imagine. And I didn't get any notification for that. So, guess he stayed put. We have 46 wins and we're third in the division. So our division has two, or I guess I should say three very good teams in it. And we are not going to hit the 50 mark? Oh my goodness, we did. That was massive. I had zero faith that we were going to go three for zero in our last three, but here we are. The Ducks only had 50 wins as well, but they got 110 points because 10 overtime losses. They would actually win the President's Trophy. Look at how competitive our division was. We were third in the division and fourth in the league. What a first line. Landy, Bergey, and Wheeler. Two Leafs legends in net between Campbell's Chicken Noodle Soup and Jimbo. They had McDonough and Doughty and then Caleb Jones and Moritz. This team is sick. Wow, they're even set for the future almost here that first line a little old but you know every other part of the team is quite established and ready to go for the future maybe not every part of the team but you know they have a, a good foundation let's put it that way the 19th place Bruins sneak in with a record of 38 34 and 10 86 points I just randomly thought to do this and I am genuinely just doing this for my own curiosity but if anyone else wants to see it we're gonna look at the San Jose Sharks they finished last so they had Besser, Eklund, and Rantanen oh boy Robert Thomas on their second line 
John Gibson in net. Shea Theodore and Nate Schmidt, why were they so bad? Am I missing something here? Svech got a Crosby amount of points, and he's still 88 overall. I thought he might go up a little bit. Tage Thompson got 72. Phenomenal number. Doesn't he wear number? He does wear number 72. What a legend. Brady put up 65 points. How many pims did he get? 52. So that's not that outrageous. Brandon Sod and DeBrusque both put up 50. We got Gallagher with 47. More 42. Dubois 40. Let's just go through the entire roster here. Cole got 13. And nobody was a dash. No, I don't think so. We were all in the green. Mike Smith played a nice amount of games. He went 43, 20, and 5. Three shutouts, a 9, 18, 254. Casey, on the other hand, didn't do so hot. Igor playing for Tampa. So I guess he replaced Vasilevsky, even though, you know, it's a fantasy draft. But regardless, a 9, 20, 227. Tampa Bay is good, even in fantasy drafts. Pavel had a 9.23 and a 2.43. And Mike Smith actually was second in the league for dubs. Kel McCarr significantly led defenseman. He had 86 points. And then we got Brent Burns with a nice amount there for the Golden Knights. Yossi put up 65. And then we got 63 apiece between Hughes and Doughty. Pionk. Nobody broke the hundo this year. Kucherov put up 97 and 58 tucks. Oh boy. We got 94 from March or so and Barkov as well. Kyle Connor put up 89. Malkin with 88. And Sveshnikov 87. He's right there. So we had some very good stats this season. Nikita won the Rocket Richard and it was not even close. So he gets the Art Ross and the Rocket Richard. I'm just absolutely positive there's going to be some other trophies sprinkled in there. Playoff time. Let's sim the first three games. That's a hot start. Can we sweep them, however? No, we cannot. Will they live to fight another day? They won't. Our next victim is the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Once again, we will sim the first three games and the same result. We are 3-0. Will this time be a sweep? No. But will they live to fight another day? No, they won't. Our conference final opponent is the Smashville Predators. First three games. Here we go. They took one that time. That's a little bit different. Nice. We can once again win a series 4-1, to one, but Nashville could be the first team to fight and see another day. They won't, however. We make it to the Stanley Cup Finals. I did not expect that. Like, what? Are you kidding me? Every time I think our team looks sick, we don't even make the playoffs or we get first round swept. This time I was like, meh, I don't know. I feel like we get 40 wins and not make it. Here we are, playing for the Stanley Cup. The Broad Street Bullies also got here in convincing fashion. They are 12-3 and three in the playoffs, so let's sim the first three matchups, and that's not a good start. Can we make it a best of three? No, we cannot. Not looking good for your Edmonton Oilers, but we already made it a lot further than I expected us to, so I can't complain. 1-1 one, one after 1, 2-1 two, one after 2, here we go, nice howla, fire me up, Hannafin's gonna score, and Duchesne is gonna score, oh, let's chill, can we chill for a second, time out, we had a 5 on 3, they killed that off, but we scored on the 5 on 4, we're not out of it just yet, 1 goal differential, and that is gonna do it. Congrats to the Broad Street Bullies. Svech lit it up in the playoffs as well. 24 points in 20 games. That guy is an all-star. He's 90 overall now. The Flyers finished 7th in the league. Let's have a look at their roster here. They had Fiala, Duchesne, and Bamstrom. Bjugstad, Terry, and Shen. Lekkonen. Okay, I don't get it. They did have a very good top four defensively, though. Hannafin with Fox and then Pareko and Brody. Their backup goalie was Dustin Wolf. Brady Kachuk also got over point a game. 22 points in 20 playoff games. We had a very, very solid team. I don't know what I did, but I did something. Svech actually led the league, and Kachuk was number two. Duchesne at number three with 19. And then we have Makar and Fox also with 19. Trevor Moore got 18, so just another guy there. Not a big deal. We also have DeBrusque right here with 16. This is the best 83 overall goaltender in the world apparently put up a 935 save percentage and a 207 GAA he went 16 3 and 1 with two shutouts I can't complain with Mike Smith he absolutely carried his weight 915 268 you did your part Mike it's just we couldn't get it done I'll just go through the awards here real quick but that was a pretty fun one and now we could do the inverse because I could do the draft where the last player cannot be older than the previous player so that's got to be pretty strategically done as well here's the overall playoff tree that's how everything went down but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed that one i had a good time with that and i'm looking forward to the inverse one 
I might even record it right after this, but it's gonna be a tricky one. I am pretty confident of that. Who knows though, I kind of thought this one was gonna be difficult and we turned out just fine. Although we did get wrecked in the finals. It is what it is. We got there anyway, and we finished fourth in the league. So overall, just an astounding season. Well, thank you guys for your continued support and your contributions to video ideas, stuff like that. I appreciate you guys. And I just hope that I can entertain you. That's what I'm here to do. But on that note, I will see you soon.